Welcome back to understand and implement Azure API management series. Now, this is part two. In the part one, we discussed about the API management, what it is, and we also tried to learn the key terminologies that are used within the API management. We also looked at the API management components and also configured the APIM service using the Azure portal. In the part two of the series, we are going to publish and add APIs to the Azure API management service. We will learn about the security consideration for APIs and then we will look into the features of APIM. We will also look into the SKUs and the pricing in the offering and finally we will look at the policies that can be enforced on the APIs or the overall product that we had discussed in part one. In case you have any doubts or you want to learn more about the API management, the basics of it, please feel free to go to the part one of the series. The link now appears at the top right corner as a notification. So let's get started with the part two. Before we get started on adding an API to the Azure API management service. Let me show you what we already have. So here I am on my Azure portal and in the session one, which is the part one of the series, we created this Azure API management service named ATCSL APIM. Now this is on the developer pricing tier. And if I go to APIs, it already has an existing API called Echo API which is provided by Microsoft as a default API. So this Echo API, if I click on it, it will show me certain methods. So it has a post, a put, along with the delete and the get methods. So this is by default provided. Other than that, if I click on products, we have two products named starter and unlimited. If I go to subscriptions, there are certain subscriptions which were already pre-created when we deployed this service. So we already have this. Other than that, if I click on the search bar and go to the app services, we already have an app service APIM demo app new. So that is the app service that I have created. Why is this? Because what I'll do is I have created an API using Visual Studio Community Edition 2022 and from there I will be publishing my API to this particular app service. And then within my API management service, I will be using the app services web app to import this particular API which I will be publishing on the APIM demo app new app service. So that's about it. Let's get started with publishing the API to my API demo app new app service. This is Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition and here I created an ASP.NET API. So when you create an ASP.NET API, you only get a default API which is created for you and here it is weather forecast. And we have the weather forecast controller. This is an MVC with the model view controller so we have this controller of weather forecast API. It has a string array variable called summaries, which is of type static read only, and it has certain value. Other than that, it has a get method, and the name is get weather forecast. What it does is it returns the date, the temperature, and the summary. So it's a very simple API that is created by default for me when I create the ASP.NET API on Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. Now, what I'll be doing is, I will right click on the project and then try to publish this. It will ask me where I want to publish. So for me, the target is Azure. I'll click on next. And then I have this app service, which is on Windows. I'll click on next again. And now it will try to find out if my subscription already has an app service and it found a app service inside the APIM demo resource group. So I will expand this. I will choose APIM demo app new, the one that we saw earlier. So I'll click on it and then click next. And here it shows the API management service. 
within APIM demo RG resource group. So I can expand this and I see the ATCSL APIM, the API management service that we have, and then we have the APIs. Now, why does it show? It shows this because if you already have your API, you can simply update that. So for us, it is not needed. So what I'll do is I'll click on skip this step and then click on finish. So it has started deploying the API to the app services. This is a quick process and it will be done quickly. I'll just click on close and from the top, I'll click on publish. So the publish has already started for the API to the app services. So we will wait for the process to be completed and I'll pause the video and return back once this is done. The API has now been published and you can see here it says that publish has been succeeded. What we can also do is we can just close this and we can go back to the controller and from here we will try to see what the code does. Rather what we should do is we can just click on the run button and see it in action. So here we have the swagger page, it's open and it says weather forecast. We'll use the get method from here, so we'll click on it. It does not accept any parameters and the example schema that you see here is the date along with the temperature and the summary. What we can do is we can click on try it out and then click on execute. What it does is it will call the weather forecast and the get method will be executed. It will bring all the values that were there within the array. So now that we see it running here, I'll go back to Azure and see how it shows us the value there on the Azure portal. We're back on the Azure portal and as you can see, we are on the app service APIM demo app new. We have the URL here, which is APIM app demo new. So I'll click on that. And for now, it will show me an error. Why? Because I have not called the weather forecast. So for that, what I can do is I can just type in slash and then weather forecast and hit enter. Now here we will see the result returned in the JSON format. So the result that we got there within the swagger file, the same is given here but it is not formatted. Now that we have the API published to the app service, we will go back to the Azure API and import the API from there. So I'll close this window and from the search bar, I'll click on API management. Once I'm there, I'll click on ATCSL API M. And once the page loads, I'll scroll down and from under the APIs, I'll click on APIs. From the right hand side, I'll scroll down and it says create from Azure resource and gives me an option to use the app service for adding the API. So I'll click on it and I get a pop-up where I can add the API. As you can see here, I have two options. The first one is basic, the other one is full. Basic is almost all these options that you get with the base URL and you have to give the display name and the name. But if I click on full, it will give me additional options where I can add the tags, I can select the products of which this API will be a part. So let's get started with the full version. I'll click on browse for the app service and from the pop-up that opens, I'll select the APIM demo app new, the one that I had uploaded to the app service. So I'll click on it and click on select. Now it will auto populate the display name as well as the name. For the display name, I'll change it to weather forecast. And for the name, I let it remain as weather hyphen forecast, which was automatically populated. For the tags, I'll give it a tag of weather. 
and it will do it for me. Now for the products, if I click on this text box, it will give me two options. The first one is a starter and the other one is unlimited. The two products that we already had. So what I will do is let me select the starter product and we'll let remain unlimited as is. We'll create a separate product and then add this API to that product. And that we will be doing it from outside. So I have added it to the starter product for the gateways. It is a managed gateway. If I want, I can click on versioning for this API. So I can click the checkbox here. I can add the version number with the version schema. And for the version schema, there are three options. The first one is the path. The other one is the header and then the query string. And if I enter the version number as V1, if you see the usage example with the base URL, it also added the version. For now, let us uncheck this box and then click on create. It will take a couple of minutes and this API will be added as a backend service for this API management service. Now, as you can see, the weather forecast has been added to the API services backend service. And the other one is the echo service. Now for the weather forecast, I have different options here. I can click on settings and I will see all those options that we had selected earlier for configuring this weather forecast API. If I scroll down, for the subscription, by default, it says subscription required. And then for the security, as of now, it is none. I can select the security as OAuth 2.0 or OpenID Connect for authorization. Other than that, I have the application insights, the Azure Monitor, as well as local. And remember, we don't have this option available in the consumption plan. So we don't need this. What we can do is we can click on test. If you see here, we have the template parameters. We then have the query parameters, headers, and we can also select a product. If I simply click on send, it should give me 404 not found. And this is what it is. Why? Because we did not add the method that was supposed to be called. So for the template parameters, let me add weather forecast. And then from the bottom, I'll click on send. Now here it is. It says 200. Okay. And it returned the result. And if you remember from the swagger page also, when we call the weather forecast get method, we received this result. So now this is successful. One more thing to note here is you don't need a postman to test the APIs. It is inbuilt and you can test it from here as well. If I scroll up, there are other options as well. You can select a product or you can leave it as it is because you are directly working with the get method of the weather forecast API. So now that this is done, let's look into revisions. So we have revisions here. We can add the revision if we want and then the change log. So in case, I wish to add a revision. So let's click on add revision here. We can give it a name of revision two, and then click on create. Now you can see it has an ID created as two. It was created on January 1st, 2023. This is revision two and the URL is slash rev two. It is online, but it is not the current revision that we will be using. In order to make this the current version, what we can do is we can simply click on the three dot and we can click on make current. So here I have the option to click on the post to public change log for this API. And if I click on it, I'll have to give the description for the change log and I can click on save. So let's say 
this version is just revision 2 and click on save so now this revision becomes the current revision and if I click on change log it gives us the details that we had filled while creating this revision so I'll go back to revisions and if I click on the three dots here it says create version from this revision and edit description if you remember we had discussed earlier about the versions and the revisions and in essence you can create multiple versions of the same revision now apart from that if you look at the top it says revision 2 because that's the current revision and we can click on design and here I have the option to edit the front end to add the policies to the inbound processing or to the outbound processing as well as the back end now we are not going to work on the policies right now we will be working on the policies later in the course but just so as to give you a sneak peek what I can do is I can click on policies from here and it gives me an XML file now from here I can set the inbound rule the backend rule as well as the outbound rules apart from the errors that we can also add now if I add something it is a common file between the inbound the outbound as well as the backend services if I add something here it will be reflected in other policies as well which are for outbound and backend so I can add those rules from here or I can click on add policies and these are certain default policies which are already there and we can select it from here and add it to our policies I'll click on discard here and same thing goes for add policies here in the outbound service I can set the headers I can validate the content and there are other policies as well just click on discard for now and then we have the backend service I can click on the XML icon here and the same thing will be displayed I'll just click on discard and one more thing to note as of now whatever policies or this architecture that you see here if I make any changes it will be good for all the operations that you see in order to just work on a particular method you'll have to click on that particular method for us it is a get method for weather forecast I can click on it and you will see those changes here so now the front end shows get and now if you add the policies it will be specifically for this get method let's click on the edit button here and now you can edit the front end so it shows the display name the name as well as the URL if you want you can add the description add the tags and then you have different options for template query headers request and response and I will show you shortly how they are used let's now try to add an API manually for that I'll click on add API and from here I have different options so I can define a new API using HTTP WebSocket GraphQL and Synthetic QL other than that I have options to create from definitions as well as from Azure resources that we previously saw for now I'm going to create that manually using HTTP so I'll click on HTTP and here I will just let it remain as basic I need to give the display name the name will be auto populated and then I'll have to give the API URL suffix so for this let's give it a name of sample API the name is auto populated but for this API to work I need the API URL suffix so let us give it a name of test and then click on create now I have three API's here one is the echo API we then have the sample API and last one is the weather forecast that we previously added now this sample API does not have a backend 
It was just created for the testing purposes. And why is this used? Supposedly, as an administrator, you want to create the API management service and you need to configure everything, test everything, how everything is working. You can create it without the need of any backend services or without the need of any backend APIs. In the meanwhile, the developers can continue working on their APIs. They can keep on developing their APIs and you can create your frontend. So that's the purpose. Now, in order to use this, what we can do is we can click on add operation and we will use the get method under URL. For the display name, I'll give it a name which can be test call. Again, the name is auto populated. We don't need to give any description. That's fine for the method. The get is selected. That also is OK. But for the responses, I can click on responses and click on add response. I'll scroll down and from here I will select 200 OK. There are other options as well like 100 continue or 401 switching protocols, processing and so on and so forth. For us, this is 200 OK, the one that we are going to select. Once this is done, I can give the description and then under representations, I'll click on add representation. As of now, there is nothing, but if I start typing, it will give me different options. So what we need to do is we need to add the content type as application JSON. So I will just type in slash JSON and this option appears. I will select this option and for the sample, I'm going to add one JSON string. So it will start with a curly braces. I will give the key as first name and the value as Neeraj and that's it. This is okay. And now what I can do is I can click on save, but wait for a minute. It says you need to add the URL to go to the resource and for this to work, I will add the URL as test. Now everything seems to be okay. I'll click on save. This is done and now I can test it. But before doing that, I need to use the mocking. Now what is mocking? Mocking lets you mock the response from the actual APIs. So you don't need to go to the actual APIs, the actual backend services. Instead, from the inbound processing, you can mock the response and it will help you in multiple ways. Your partners or the consumers of the APIs, you can give them the first cut to have a look and feel how the request and the response will be working and they'll get the feel of an API. This will also help the developers to continue with the implementation and testing of the API management instance even if the backend is not available to send the real responses. So that integration becomes easy. So what I need to do here is I need to add a policy. And from here, there is a policy called mock responses. I'll click on this. And then for the API management response, it will autofill as 200. Okay. Application JSON. I need to simply click on save and then go to test and from here I can simply click on send. If you look at the HTTP response, it says 200 OK and for this 200 OK, we selected the response as the first name Neeraj. Remember, we changed the response from the front end and we gave it as first name Neeraj. So that's what mocking is. And this is how the query, the headers, request and responses work within the front end. I hope now mocking is clear to you and how those are used. Enough about the APIs. Now let's look into the products. So I will click on products under APIs. And as I already told you, there are two products which are pre-created. The first one is a starter and the other one is unlimited. 
So what we can do is we can add additional products if we want. But before we do that, let's look into the existing products. So the first one is a starter. Let's click on it. Once we are inside and we click into the APIs, it will show me all the APIs that are part of this particular product. So the Echo API was already there. But remember, when we added the weather forecast, we added this to the starter API. If I go back to my API page and if I click on unlimited, you will not find that API here under the APIs because the weather forecast was not added and it only has the echo API. I'll go back again. And from here, I will try to add another API. So I'll click on add and here I can give a product name. So it can be test product. The ID that is created is test hyphen product. I need to give a description. And this is needed because the developers need to know what product is this. So just to help them out, we need to give this description. Now we have three options here. I already told you published request subscription and requires approval. We can check on published so that this product gets published when we click on the create button. Other than that, this required subscription is by default checked. And if this is checked, the developers or the consumers need to provide an API key. So for now, what I will do is I'll just simply uncheck this and we will also let remain the requires approval unchecked. It will automatically be disabled when you uncheck the requires subscription. For the APIs, I can add it from here or I can add it later. So let's do it from here itself. I can click on plus and then a small pop-up will appear which shows Echo API, the weather forecast as well as the sample API. So I'll click on sample API and I can also add the weather forecast. So these two APIs are added. Now I can click on create. So this product is now getting published and it will appear in the list of all the available APIs. Here we are on the products page and you can now see all the three products available. We have the starter, we have the test product as well as we have unlimited. I apologize because there is a spelling mistake and there is nothing called PTO duct, but that's fine. We'll let it remain like this. No problems. Now that the product has been created, what we can do is we can click on that product. And here again, under the APIs, we have two APIs already there, sample API and the weather forecast that we had added. And I already told you that we can add the APIs after the product is created. So we can do it from here. I can click on add and then add the echo API. The other two APIs, they are not highlighted because they are already present. I can click on select and the third API, which is the echo API will also get added to this particular product. We are done. So we'll go out of it and we'll go to products. So this is how you create a product and add the APIs to the existing products. We then have the subscription. And for the product test product, if you see it has the primary as well as the secondary key and the owner is administrator. I can click on three dots here and I can click on show and hide keys. It will show the keys and it will show the primary as well as the secondary key to me. There are other options as well, like suspend subscription. I can cancel the subscription as well or delete the subscription for this particular product. 
what we can also do is we can generate the primary and the secondary key from here and this will be done specifically for the administrator. Now if I go back to the products again and click on test product and then go to subscriptions. Here we have the primary and the secondary key which was being shown under the subscriptions. So it's the same thing. I can go back to the products and if you want to add additional primary or the secondary key for other users, what I can do is I can simply add the users. So I will click on users. As of now, the administrator is the only user. The email ID is neeraj at the azuretraining.com and it's for administrators and developers. So I'll click on add and assuming that there is another person by the same name as Neeraj Kumar. I'll give it the first name of Neeraj, the last name of Kumar and for the email ID, I will enter another email ID that I have and add the password as well as confirm password and then click on add. Now here the authentication type is basic. I can change that as well. There is another option to send an invite to a particular user. To do that, we can click on invite and from here I can add the first name, the last name and the email ID. And this is to send the invite and send the notification for the developer portal. So we can send an invite from here as well. I'll click on close and then I can click here under Neeraj Kumar and it shows the state which is active, the identities is basic. So once the user has been created, what we can do is we can go back to subscriptions and then click on add subscriptions. Once that is done, I need to give a name. test product subscription. For the display name, I will type in test product. Under the scope, I can choose a product and from under the products drop down, I can choose the different products that we have. So I'll click on test product and for the user, I can choose Neeraj Kumar with an external email ID. And from here also, we can send the notification for the developer portal. So once that is done, I can click on create and it will create an additional row with the primary and the secondary key for this particular developer, which is Neeraj Kumar. Now that we understand the products, the subscriptions and how the APIs are added to the products and how the subscriptions can be created for different users and groups, Let's go to the developer portal and to do that, what we can do, we can click on the portal overview under developer portal. Once we are there, you will notice that since this is the first time, it says your developer portal has not been published yet. So what's the difference? The difference is if I go to the APIs and click on the developer portal, it will show me the page where as an administrator, I have all the options to edit every part of the page. So let the page open and then I'm going to show you how it looks. So this is the default page. You can customize it as an administrator and you can add your logo and change the design entirely. You can change the name here. You can change the top menu, how it looks and even here, you can change the buttons, the styles and everything. Just for the sake of an example, here I have two more icons here. One says roles. So if I click on it, it shows that this page is how it looks to an anonymous user. For the authenticated user, the sign up option or the sign in option is removed and we only get the explore APIs option. If I click back on anonymous, it says sign up and explore APIs. Both the buttons are 
available. But we cannot click on it. It's just for the editing purposes and change the look and feel. So that is what is meant by publishing. As of now, this page is not published. So I'll close this. And if I go to the portal overview, I have the option here to publish this page. So I'll click on the publish button and then click on yes. By the time this publishing is happening, let me tell you that we have other options as enable course and enable Azure Active Directory. Enable course will help you with the cross origin request. So if you read here, it says cross origin resource sharing is a mechanism that allows resources on a web page to be requested from another domain. So basically it's the cross domain request that gets handled using the enable course method. Other than that, you have the option for enabling the Azure Active Directory for the user sign in. So we'll let it remain like this. The version of the developer portal has now been published and we can now open the developer portal. But you will notice one thing once the page opens. It still shows the editing mode. And why is that so? It is because I'm still logged in as an administrator. So what I can do is I can just simply copy the URL and then open the incognito window. And from here I can right click and go to that URL. Now that I am on this page, it is showing me just the explore APIs. It means that I'm already signed in, but it does not show me anything related to sign up or the editing page. So what I'll do is let me simply sign out because I signed in earlier with the other profile and you'll not get the feel of what it actually looks like before the logging in. So it shows the same page after I've signed out, it shows the page for sign up and explore APIs. So sign up is not needed because I already had the invitation as Neeraj Kumar with an email ID that I gave later. So what I will do is I'll just click on sign in and here I'll give the same email ID. And I'll enter the password. I'll click on sign in. And now it will take me to that same page. Here I don't have any option to change the layout because I'm logged in as a normal user. What I can do is I can click on APIs and here all the APIs that are there will be listed. So we have the echo API. We also have the sample API as well as the weather forecast. If I go to products, my three products will be listed. The first one is the starter. Then we have the test product and the unlimited. So let's go back to the APIs here. And if I try to run the sample API, it will open another page. And here it says response 200. Okay. And it will show me the result. In another case, if I go back to the APIs and if I click on weather forecast, it will show me the methods that are present. And since there are multiple different methods, it will ask me to select one method to run it. Here I can select weather forecast get method and then I can click on try it. But hold on, this may not work. Why? Because the cross origin request is not enabled for this particular API or for this particular product. So let's try it for the parameters. Let's under the value of weather forecast. And if I scroll down, I have the subscription and then I can click on send. It will work for a while and then it will say that unable to complete the request. This one is not highlighted, but let me read this out for you. It says, since the browser initiates the request, it requires cross origin resource sharing enabled on the server. So let's do that. 
If I minimize this browser and go back to my Azure portal, I can click on enable course, click on yes and wait for the enablement of course. So this is now done. What I can do is I can go back to my incognito window and from here I can click on refresh. I'll click on the try it again and here I'll enter the value for the parameter as weather forecast. I'll scroll down and then click on send. Here you go. Now you receive the HTTP response which is 200 OK and it will show all the result that we previously got when we were working with the weather forecast API. So this is how the developer portal works. Here the consumers and the developers can test their APIs, the backend services. They can choose the APIs or they can choose the products that they want to use and they can use them for their purposes. So what I'll do is I'll just simply go up and close this and I can go back to products. Now from here I have three options. The first one is a starter, then we have test product and then we have unlimited. If we go to test product, the status shows as active and from here any developer or the consumer who wants to use this product can click on subscribe. So before that they need to give a new product subscription name and then click on this subscribe button. So in this case, once the product has been subscribed, they'll get access to Echo API, the sample API as well as the weather forecast. I'll scroll up and if I enter the name here, I can click on subscribe now. And I will be subscribed. So now the account details, if you look into it, it will say the email, the first name and the last name. Also, it will give me the registration date of today, which is 1123. And from here, I can change the name, I can change the password or I can close the account as well. If I scroll down here, there are subscription details for this user. The first one is the test product. It has a primary and the secondary key. And then I also have testing one, the one that I just created. And this one also has the started on along with the primary and the secondary key. So as a developer or as the consumer, I can regenerate my primary or the secondary key because this is specifically created for me. And for both the subscription, it shows the state as active. But one thing to note, both of these subscriptions are for the same product, which is test product. So what I can do, I can just simply go back to the products and I can click on starter. And if I see the APIs within this product, there are two. One is the Echo API, the other one is the weather forecast. I can give it a name of testing two and then click on subscribe. And now in this case, it will add one more subscription, but this time it is for a different product called starter. And it will also have the primary and the secondary key along with the started on as it was the case for test product as well as testing one. So now that this user has been subscribed to this particular product, what I can do is I can go back to the Azure portal and from here, if I click on subscriptions, it will show the display name of testing one and testing two, both of these products, which has been subscribed by the user Neeraj Kumar. And this was done from the developer portal. So this is how the developers can subscribe to the products and they can use it for their consumption. I will go back to the developer portal and from here I'll scroll up and now I can click on reports. Here under the reports, 
I have the option to get the reports for last one hour, today or last seven days, last 30 days as well as last 90 days. It will show me all the details like for the products, how many API calls were made, which products were they and from which locations were these calls made from. So if I look into it, mostly it is showing as India, which is one request was sent. And if I scroll down, it will also show me the data transfer as well as the API response time. I'll scroll down further and here it shows the product, which is the test product and the starter. And apart from that, I have these subscriptions. I created two subscriptions now, which was testing one and testing two. And apart from that, I also created another subscription from the Azure portal, which was test product. And I have three APIs, weather forecast, echo and sample APIs. And you can see the response time for weather forecast was 145 milliseconds. So all the data, all the analytics for this particular user will be captured. Not just for this user, any user signing in and working on the APIs and the products and subscribing to them, everything gets logged in as well as the request that was sent, the time it was taken to service the request, every single detail will be captured. And this is for a particular user who is signing in into the developer portal, they can see their report. So that was it from the developer portal side. I'll close this window and go back to my presentation. It is prudent to discuss about security as security is a major concern. And we have already had a sneak peek into the security considerations in Azure API management service when we configured the Azure API management service in our previous demo in part one of the series. Now we had discussed about how we can protect an API in Azure API management using the OAuth 2.0 for the authorization. We also discussed about how you can protect serverless APIs with Azure API management and Azure AD B2C, which is business to consumer. Now, apart from that, you can secure the APIs using the client certificate. Those were the three options that we saw there and you can mitigate the OWASP API security threats. Now, apart from that, there are a few more things to consider. You can include the policies on the APIs and the products, which can help you in multiple ways, like enforcing the limits and these policies can be applied at the front end in the inbound and the outbound processing, as well as on the backend service, which are the APIs that we already saw. Now you can create the users and groups and allow them access to specific or all the APIs. You can also enable the subscription on the APIs and products for the consumers so that they need to include the keys that is the primary key or the secondary key in the request header or the query string to use the APIs. And finally, you can also enforce using certificates for the APIs, which we had just discussed. It's high time now that we talk about the features that the Azure API management tiers have to offer. So basically here we have five different tiers. We have the consumption, then we have the developer basic, standard and premium. So there are different features which are allowed in some of the tiers, but it is not allowed in the other tiers or are not available. So let's discuss them. The first one is the Azure AD integration. Now this is not available in the consumption tier, whereas it is available in the developer standard and the premium tier, whereas it is not available in the basic tier as well. Now, what is this Azure AD integration? It enables the use of Azure Active Directory and the Azure AD B2C as the identity provider for the user sign in on the developer portal. Then we have the virtual network support. Here, the consumption tier, the basic tier, as well as the standard tier do not support this VNet integration, but it is allowed on the developer and the premium tiers. And 
using this virtual network support, you can bring in your API management service within your virtual network. And we had already discussed about it. The third one is the multi-region support. That's the one that is only supported in the premium tier. And since the multi-regions deployment is allowed only in the premium tier, that is why we have the availability zone only there in the premium SKU. Other than that, for the multiple custom domains, it is allowed just in the developer as well as in the premium tiers. And of course, yes, as a developer, when you are configuring your API management service, you need to check how it works and all, right? So that is why this feature is available there with the developer tier. Other than that, we have the developer portal. The consumption tier do not support the developer portal, but it is there with all the other SKUs, be it developer, basic, standard, or premium. Now this developer portal that includes related functionality, such as the users, the groups, the issues, applications and email templates and notifications. We then have the built-in cache. Other than the consumption tier, this built-in cache is available with the developer basic, standard and the premium tier. Whereas for the consumption tier, the external cache is definitely allowed, but the built-in cache is not there in the consumption tier. Again, for the built-in analytics, it is not available in the consumption tier. It is available in all the other SKUs. Then comes the self-hosted gateway. Again here, the consumption basic and standard do not support the self-hosted gateway. It's only available in the developer and the premium tiers. But just remember that in the developer tier, self-hosted gateways are limited to a single gateway node. We then have the TLS settings. Yes, it is allowed for all the tiers and you can use TLS 1.0, 1.1 and we saw it when we were configuring the API management service. We already discussed about the external cache. We then have the client certificate authentication and yes, it is allowed in all the tiers to authenticate the request for the backend APIs. We then have the policies. Yes, policies is allowed for all the tiers. And we learned a lot about the policies, where it can be implemented and what structure does it have and what role does it have to play for the APIs. But there is one thing to note. In the consumption tier, there are certain policies, rather two specific policies, which are not allowed. One is the rate limit by key and the other one is quota by key. We'll scroll down. We then have backup and restore. Backup and restore is available in all the tiers except for the consumption tier. Then we have the management over Git. It is allowed in all the tiers except for the consumption. Similarly, for the direct management of the APIs as well as the Azure monitor logs and metrics is not allowed in the consumption tier. So if you are planning to have the analysis and the metrics and the log analytics thing, you cannot use the consumption plan. You will have to choose any other specific SKUs which allows for the monitor logs and metrics. Again, for the static IP, you don't get it with the consumption plan. For the WebSocket APIs, it is allowed in all of the SKUs except for the consumption plan. And similarly, we have the synthetic GraphQL APIs, which is currently under preview it is not allowed in the consumption tier. If we talk about the GraphQL APIs, that is allowed in all the tiers. I hope you now understand which features are available in which of the SKUs and all those features that are not allowed in a particular SKU. Now that we understand the features for each of the SKUs, let's try to understand the pricing options for each of these particular tiers. So we have the consumption, the developer, basic, standard, premium, and isolated. Now you will see isolated as a new term, but this is under preview. It's not generally available. Let's understand them. So the purpose of the consumption is to have the serverless version of the API management service, and it is built 
per execution basis. The developer SKU is for the non-production use. Of course, basic is just the entry level. The standard is the medium volume production use cases. The premium is the topmost having the high volume or enterprise production use cases. If we talk about the price, it is 7 cents per hour for the developer SKU, 21 cents per hour for the basic, 95 cents per hour for a standard, but it is $3.83 per hour for the premium tier. If we talk about the consumption plan, I told you that this is based on per execution basis. Here in the consumption tier, we get up to 1 million calls per subscription that is included. And then we have approximately 4 cents per 10,000 calls. Here again, the cache is not allowed for the consumption tier, but we have 10 MB of cache available for the developer tier, 50 for the basic, 1 GB for the standard, whereas 5 GB for premium and isolated. And this we are talking about the built in cache. Scale out units, not possible in the consumption tier. And similarly for the developer, you can just have one unit. Basic allows for two, whereas the standard allows for four units. If we talk about premium and the isolated, there are 12 per region that are allowed. And apart from that, you can call the support to add more units. If we talk about SLA, there is no SLA for the development tier because it is a developer tier, isn't it? We have 99.95% for your consumption, your basic standard, but you get 99.99% for your premium as well as for the isolated tier. External cache definitely is allowed in all the tiers and we learned about it when we were discussing about the features. And rest, if I scroll down, these are all the features that we had already discussed in our previous section about features. The only addition that you see here is the estimated maximum throughput and this is per unit based. For consumption tier, you cannot scale out to particular units, but it's an automatic scaling. For the development tier, the estimated maximum throughput per unit is 500 and we know that we just get one unit in the development tier, whereas we get 1000 requests per second for the basic tier and here we get two units. For the standard tier, we get four units and there are 2,500 requests per second. And for the premium and the isolated, we get 4,000 requests per second. And here we can have 12 units per region. And also we discussed that more units can be added if we call this support. For the compute isolation, it is not generally available. so. Let's not discuss this for now, but it is only available in the isolated tier. Let us now try to understand what policies are and how policies can be implemented in the Azure API management service. Policies are a set of rules, a collection of statements that are run sequentially on the request or the response of an API. And in simple words, API publishers can change the behavior of the API using the policies. Now, if you want the format conversion from XML to JSON, you can use the policy. And you can also use the policy to limit the call rate to restrict the number of incoming calls from a developer. You can also use the policy to filter the requests that are coming from certain IP addresses. Many policies are available out of the box, which you can use directly and that we will see shortly and policies are applied inside the gateway between the API consumer and the managed API. So here you can apply the policies on the inbound processing or the outbound processing or even at the backend, which is the actual APIs performing the process. While the gateway receives requests and forwards them unaltered to the underlying API on the backend services, a policy can apply changes to both the inbound request and the outbound response. 
policy definitions what are they they are simple xml documents that describe a sequence of statements to apply to requests and response the policy xml configuration is divided into multiple parts the first one is the inbound the second one is the backend and the third one is the outbound and other than that we also have one section which is on errors section they can be applied at a global level a product level or at an individual api level as well now there are certain things to keep in mind if an error occurs during the processing of a request any remaining steps in the inbound backend or the outbound sections they are all skipped they will not be performed and by placing a policy statements in the on error section what you can do is you can review the error that occurred using the context dot last error property you can also inspect and customize the error response using the set body policy and configure what happens if an error occurs so there are multiple usage and we will see them in action when we are doing the demo here i am on my azure portal and i am on the api page of the api management service i have already selected by the forecast and what i can do is i can set the policies at the global level where it will affect all the operations because none of the methods are selected i can set the policy on the inbound processing level or at the outbound processing level or even at the backend what i can also do is i can select one of the methods say get with a forecast and then i can click on add policy what i can also do is i can click on this xml icon which is the policy code editor and i can manually add the policies here but for now what i will do is i'll add the predefined policies and for that to work i'll click on add policy and here i have a list of default policies which are predefined for me so here i will use limit call rate so i will click on limit call rate and number of calls say i will make it to two and for the renewal period in seconds i will do it as 5 seconds for the counter key i can use the api subscription and increment condition is any request i can also choose successful response code which is 200 okay or i can choose any request or custom so let's choose successful response code 200 okay and then i'll click on save so what it will do is if the number of calls are more than 2 in less than 5 seconds it will give me an error so the policy has been added and you can see rate limit by call and if i click on the add policy from here i can add a policy for the outbound processing but instead of that let's look at the policy code editor so if i click on it you can see the same policy added here in the inbound so i told you earlier that you can add the policy in the inbound outbound or the backend it will be reflected at all the places because it's the same file so i can click on discard and once that is done let's try to test this so i click on test and for the template parameters let me add the value of weather forecast and then i can click on send 200 okay let me send it again and let me send that again 200 okay and now after the third time it says 429 too many request and if you look at the body of the message it says rate limit is exceeded try again in 1 seconds so this policy has enforced a rule on the get method of the weather forecast api that you cannot make more than 2 calls in less than or equal to 5 seconds similarly 
you can add the policies on the outbound or the backend services as well. To do that, you can simply go to design and from here, you can click on add policy to select from the existing default policies that are pre-created for you. You can also add certain custom policies as well. So I'll click on discard from here. And here is the page that you can use for your API management policy reference. If I scroll down, you can see access restrictions policies where you will see the one that we just used, which is limit call rate by key. And if I go down, you will see advanced policies, authentication policies, along with the caching, cross domain policies, dapper integration policies, GraphQL API policies, and whatnot. So all these policies are there for your reference. You can refer to these policies and use them as per your requirement. So that is it about the Azure API management service. I hope this was insightful. And in case you liked the video, just give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This will motivate me to create more such informative videos. Thank you again for joining me in this session. Until we meet next time, keep exploring the cloud.